Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in this series called Premeducation. Today we're going to be talking about the four pre-med principles, but in reality they're just a couple of tips and tricks to help you guys stay ahead of the game while in undergrad. It is a tough world out there, and by world I mean your campus bubble. It's not easy to balance coursework, studying for the MCAT, figuring out like making sure you want to go to medical school and become a doctor, what have you. It's hard as it is. And on top of it all, you're surrounded by other pre-med students. But if there's anything you gather from this video, I really want you guys to understand that there are ways for you guys to stay ahead of the game and limit the amount of stress that you feel on a day-to-day -day and still enjoy your college experience. <music> All of these tips are kind of coursework and studying and extracurriculars aside. They're more general tips that anybody can do regardless of what stage that you're in and being a pre-med, whether you're taking a gap year, going straight through, whether you're in college or not, what have you. These are tips for really anybody. And the first one is to stay informed. There are tons of different ways to do this at any point in your life or whether you're in college or not. If you're in college, the first things that come to mind are joining pre-health clubs on your campus or getting in contact with your pre-health advisor, and also just walking the same circles as people who are maybe a couple of years ahead of you or people that are in the same path. This will give you an opportunity to passively educate yourself all throughout college. That's something I tried to do my freshman year. I joined tons of pre-health clubs just because that's what every pre-med starts out doing. But even after that, I just spent time around other people who were doing similar things and not always studying or just hanging out, just existing in the same space. There was a study space often in my campus where everybody just went. It was more of a louder study space and there's a lot of pre-meds at my college. So I'm doing my work, but all the while I would hear someone yell across the room or be excited about some cool thing that they just found out about or a really cool opportunity. Those are the types of things that you can hear about without even really trying as long as you invest time in finding spaces where those types of resources and information can be found. So that's what I did a lot my freshman year and it really carried me on and made me comfortable one navigating those spaces and two now I feel like I'm a contributor to those spaces. So I feel like students who are in and around me oftentimes can find out things like that. The second tip that I have for you guys is to find mentors. Let me say it again. Find mentors. It doesn't matter how you find them. I'm sure there are tons of mentorship opportunities online, on your campus, in your community, but find them. There are tons of different types of mentors and you can find tons of details on those if you just Google types of mentors, but find them. These are an excellent way to fast track your success. So in my four years of college, I've picked up dozens of them. Some of them are sticking with me and I text them every other day. Some of them were just short-term ones that really helped me and guided me throughout a specific phase in my college experience. And then on the back end, we no longer needed one another. It was a very amicable depart. But in any case, mentors are so important. And they don't always have to be a doctor or a PA or a professor. These can often be people just a couple of years older than you. These can be oftentimes your peers maybe one year older than you or the same year as you, but have a little bit more experience or something that you can gain from them. And not only should you be a mentee, but you should definitely take the time in your later years of college or even right now, if you feel that you have things to benefit others, take the time to be a mentor. You get so much from the experience and it really gives you an opportunity to reflect on the things that you've done. For me, being a mentee throughout college and lately the past couple of years, I've been a mentor to a couple of people and it allowed me to reflect and analyze, okay, these are the things I have done. This was really influential and I would recommend that to someone else, whereas maybe this experience wasn't that great and I wouldn't recommend it to someone else. And that set me up really well to apply to medical school. It started my self-reflection process that everyone encourages you to do before you apply. In any case, mentors, mentors, mentors. Find them. I could do a whole video on the different types of mentors and why they're important and where to find them, but this video is just mentioning the tips and tricks. So if you want to see more about how to get mentors and things like that, make sure to comment below and I can definitely make a video about it. A third tip that I have for you guys is to focus on yourself and your journey. 
I am definitely guilty of comparing myself to everybody else around me, especially during my first year of college. However, as I kept going and now being a senior, I realized more and more every single day that comparison is the thief of joy. It's a quote I read probably a couple of years ago and it's stuck with me ever since. I am the happiest when I'm only thinking about how I am progressing. And the only time I really think about how others are progressing is if I'm supporting that individual and I'm genuinely invested in their growth. Otherwise, it is, does me no good to compare myself to someone else or to look at their experiences and say, oh, I just wish I should have done better. Oh my God, they're so good. They're gonna be here, here, and here before I even get to X, Y, and Z. Does nothing for me and it does nothing for you either. Trust me. And I know it's hard. I can say all day long, don't compare yourself to others, just focus on you and it's still not gonna happen overnight. But all you can do is continue to work on this every single day. Start to stop those intrusive thoughts whenever you see someone and see them doing well. Don't immediately think, "Ugh, I'm not doing that or I wish I was doing that. Have your moment to celebrate that individual and then later on think, okay, they did that, that's really awesome. Let's look at me and what I have going on and be proud of that. And each time you do that, you'll start to one, build confidence in yourself and two, be more excited about hearing about other opportunities and think less about, oh, I wish and more about how can I? And that changes everything. Your entire mindset will change once you start to think of hearing new opportunities as a positive rather than a negative. If you think about it, you kind of close off opportunities for yourself when you're constantly comparing yourself to others and shrinking yourself as a result. Instead, look at it, say, congrats, that's amazing, and then re redirect and say, awesome. That was interesting to me. How can I do a variation of something like that? Or I thought that was really cool, but I don't want to replicate that experience. What do I have to make that type of opportunity happen for myself? The fourth and last tip that I have for you guys is to write everything down. It sounds weird at first, and I'm sure you've heard before, write down your extracurriculars and how they made you feel. But what I'm saying is slightly different. I want you to write everything down. And when I say everything, I mean, get a calendar. I have this one, just a normal calendar with some square spaces on it, nothing too fancy. And use that small amount of space for one, every single day, write down something good that happened, anything. It doesn't have to be huge. It can be someone held the door open for me today when my hands were really full and it made me feel good inside. Or I aced my exam. Or I really thought that I failed an exam and I didn't. That is also a win in my book. Anything like that. Any one good thing that happened for that day. And one, it'll give you an opportunity to look for the highlights in every single day. Two, after a, a couple of months of doing this, it will make reflecting so much easier. This is something that I did when I first applied to college and it basically outlined all of my college essays because it was so easy for me to go back and remember that was the day that this happened. That was incredible. And so that's a good way to start if you wanna sort of amplify your reflection skills. Um, but on top of that, I still would encourage writing down all of the cool experiences that are medical school or clinically related and be detailed about it. So write down when you did it, date, time, write down who you did it with, how long you did it for, what was the details of your job, and how did it make you feel afterward? Did you have an impact on someone? What was the overall experience like? Would you go back? Would you recommend it to another person? Do you plan on continuing long term with this? Things like that. And that you can do in a regular journal. I have one that I write like all my to do lists in. And then at the end of each day, I also write a couple sentences at the bottom to mention today was really good. Today was average or this is what I want to do tomorrow. Things like that. Writing everything down is a huge, huge help. And while a lot of people will tell you to write down just your clinical experiences, do not forget. I would advise, even if you can just do it for a month, just try writing down one good thing that happened each and every day. And you'll see, you'll start to look for the good things in life and it gives you an opportunity to reflect and wind down, make it a part of your routine at the end of the day. I think it'll make a difference. Well, that is it for this one. It was pretty short, but I left a lot of tidbits in there for opportunities for me to make other videos if you have any comments, questions, or concerns. Now that I'm thinking about it, are you for real? Feel free to drop any comments below if you're wondering about anything, and I'm excited to see your calendars. I will see you in the next video. Bye.